So ladies and gentlemen, there's no question that Micah Parsons is one of the better defensive players in the National Football League. He's amongst the elite. He is a perennial Defensive Player of the Year candidate. And you could say he is the best player on the Dallas Cowboys, depending on who you ask. And this guy's just going into year three. That is how good he is. The fact that he has all of this associated with him, Pro Bowls, First Team All-Pros, Defensive Rookie of the Year, and he just completed his second season, you know, there is a lot of room for improvement. I'm really curious to see how far this man can go. You know, he just needs to have one more really good year in that production of 13-plus sacks, and he's already in top 10 categories for the Dallas Cowboys when it comes to the defensive statistics, but that's not what we're here to talk about. A lot of people have been talking about Micah Parsons moving to edge because he recently came out and said he's bulking up so he can play the position at a better clip and so that he can withstand the amount of workload that comes with the position. And so people were speculating, well, what's going on? You know, what does this mean to the linebacking court? And I'm going to just be completely honest with you. The real reason Micah Parsons is doing this, and it's clear as day, it's all for contract negotiations. Now, I'm not sitting here to say this is bad or I have a problem with it. I want Micah Parsons to go and get his money. What I'm going to just talk about is how the Cowboys built this thing up and also just look at where the Cowboys are using him. I think it's a good call that he you know, states that he is a full-time edge rusher defensive end or whatever you want to refer to it as. And the biggest reason why all of this is important is because after this year is over, Micah Parsons, regardless of how he does, how he looks on film, you name it, he's contract extension eligible. And if he has another prolific year where he's again a first-team All-Pro or even a second-team All-Pro, he has a defensive player of the year, he has however many sacks, and he gets himself into the top 10 or upper echelon of Cowboys lore when it comes to defensive players that have walked through these halls, the man's going to be coming for his money. And those edge rushers, defensive ends, again, however you want to refer to it as, get paid a lot more than inside linebackers. And it's better that he gets out in front and says, I'm not a linebacker anymore, I am an edge rusher. Because yes, you look at guys like TJ Watt and Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack, you know, you can say these dudes are outside linebackers slash edge rushers. It doesn't matter, but we refer to them as edge rushers, right? Because that's what they do. I know that sounds very cliche to say and obvious, but the reason why that's all key, because we know how the Cowboys love to negotiate. Well, Micah, you know, I understand you're asking for defensive end money or edge rusher money, but we look at you as a linebacker. Even though when you look at the statistics for 2022, Micah Parsons had four times as many snaps on the line of scrimmage than he had as an off-ball linebacker. So mess me with that if the Cowboys try to pull that stunt where they like to negotiate through the media and be like, oh, well, Micah Parsons is more of a linebacker than he is an edge rusher. No, that's going to be nonsense. So Micah Parsons getting out in front of this is key into those negotiations. So now we get into the quintessential part of the video. Well, how much money are we talking? With that, let's go ahead and dive into these contract numbers for edge rushers, outside linebackers, defensive ends, all of that, versus inside linebackers. So as you can see, TJ Watt, in terms of an average annual value, has the highest amongst his contemporaries with nearly $28 million on average. You look at Joey Bosa, another edge rusher guy, 27, Khalil Mack, 23. Now he signed that when he went over to the Bears and that contract is still ongoing. You look at Bradley Chubb, $22 million. And then you get to Roquan Smith, the highest paid inside linebacker at the time that this video was recorded at $20 million. Shaquille Leonard following that at $19.7 million, and then Fred Warner at $19 million. So you can see where the market is trending. If Micah Parsons still labeled himself as a linebacker, 
you're looking at a payday of around $20 million plus, arguably 25 because they'd be like, oh, well, we look at you more like a linebacker because of the title, which you might be saying, space, that's stupid. They wouldn't look, oh, yeah, listen, these Cowboys, you know how they act. But if you label yourself as an edge rusher and you can make yourself known as that, you're going to get a bigger payday. I mean, this is like a $10 million difference we're talking about here. And so Micah Parsons could be looking between 30 to $35 million when his time is up to get his payday. And I'm telling you right now that if the Cowboys really want to get this thing figured out, as soon as this year is over, pay him. Just pay him. Because if you don't do anything, all that's going to happen is the price tag continues to go up, and if you want to try and not get your ego hurt, just just pay him. I mean, I think that it's going to be ridiculous if the Cowboys try to play into this grudge match because Micah Parsons is very outspoken. And I don't think he would be, you know, remiss to say things out in public as I would hope he does because, you know, if the Dallas media wants to play that game and so do the Cowboys, I think Micah Parsons needs to fight back. So with that being said, you could be looking at around 30 to $35 million to re-sign Micah Parsons. So obviously, you know what's going to end up happening? Because we already heard the conversations with Trevon Diggs. As soon as his payday started coming up in conversations, oh, we could just trade him and get another guy. (laughs) No, that's not how it works, dude. Name me all the cornerbacks that we have taken that have been just as good as Trevon Diggs from the second round on. Just as good. There isn't a whole lot, if any, right? And then on top of that, you got to factor in Micah Parsons. What are we going to have a conversation of? Oh, we don't pay edge rushers this much money. And if you're Micah, I'm jumping for joy with how the Cowboys handled the draft. You got an interior defensive lineman in Mozzie Smith. You added DeMarvian Overshone. You know, you added a ton of pieces into that defense to where they will make sure that you will be able to get to that quarterback. Because now, there's going to be more of an interior presence on the defense. You have Stephon Gilmore alongside Trevon Diggs. This defense has been built around Micah Parsons so beautifully, you could be looking at a massive year for him, assuming all goes well. And I wouldn't be shocked if this is his Defensive Player of the Year campaign. He had a case last year, and if he didn't slow down because of how the defense was being handled towards the later stretch of the season... He would have won that award. So I'm not going to be shocked if he wins it next year. Or this year, really, I guess we should say. So keep that in mind. That the real reason Micah Parsons is getting in front of this is because those contract negotiations are coming up. And the sooner you get in front of that, the better. So keep in mind, the more Micah Parsons gets sacks, awards, accolades, the dude's price tag continues to go up. I wouldn't be shocked if he's asking for $40 million and I wouldn't blame him. He can make the case that he's the best defensive player in the league, especially if he gets a defensive player of the year, another first-team All-Pro. He's had an electric start to his career, and we're going to see how things go from here, but I want Micah Parsons to get that bag, and if the Cowboys are smart as soon as this year is over, regardless of what happens, you got to pay this dude. And I know I'm just preparing. For those individuals that would be like, oh, we don't need to pay Micah. We're A-OK. And all of a sudden, no, you're not. Unless Micah Parsons has one of the biggest regressions I've seen and he's nowhere close to having that happen to him, given his work ethic and given how this defense is being built up. Oh, boy. You know, if you look at anything past individual accolades and he becomes a focal point for why the Cowboys go far in a run or... Anything close to that. Just get your pocketbook ready, Jerry. Oh boy. It is going to be a fun time. So that is why I wanted to have this video out. Just have the conversation about Micah Parsons' future payday and why he's moving. So if you enjoyed, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and hit that notification bell. And if you want to support the channel further, become a channel member today. I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right, guys. Have a go. Goodbye.